what is the best way to back up your NAS in 2023? Now, if you have invested in a NAS drive to store all of your data, then you should also be backing that up somewhere else. Yes, that's right. Even though you have a bunch of redundant disks, you're still not protected from losing your data from data corruption or significant hardware failure. Now, right now, I actually have two NAS drives, one Synology and one QNAP. And over the past literal few months, I've spent time testing out a number of backup services, some of them great, some of them shockingly bad. And so in this video, I want to run you through the best options to back up your own data. The first option I went to was Backblaze. Known for being one of the best cloud and NAS backup providers out there and at a reasonable cost of just five bucks per terabyte per month. Now the setup was really simple. You just sign up, enter your card details, create a storage bucket where you'll be able to store your data and then sign into this account on the NAS drive and then choose what bucket you wanna back up to. Now once this is done, you just create your schedules and I decided to go with a once nightly backup so it just backs up overnight and doesn't slow down our internet during the day and away it went. And this is where I hit my first problem because I have so much data, around about 10 10 terabytes here that if I was to back up overnights only it would take months and I mean months to finish. So I had to change the backup to run 24 seven, which brought the time down, but then I was hitting issues during the daytime because the upload was just saturating my connection. So nothing else in the house would actually work. So I ended up setting up a speed cap on the upload speed during the day, which you can do on both NAS drives. And that then lifted it after midnight every night to try and speed things up again. Now taking this approach, we got my 10 terabytes of upload down to just three weeks roughly, which isn't bad, I don't think. Now don't forget, this is just the first upload. And once the initial upload is done, subsequent like the daily backups will be much smaller and much, much faster as well. So fast forward to around about two or three weeks later, and everything was fully uploaded and backed up. And as I thought, since then, the overnight backups have all been just absolutely fine. I don't even notice them happening anymore, other than hearing like the churning of disks in the corner of my room, if I'm in the room when the NAS backup kicks off. Now in terms of the backup speeds, other than the early hiccups, which I worked through, great. Like the restoration process, also pretty quick. You just browse your backups from within the NAS drive, select the files and folders you want to restore, and then it just goes and pulls everything down from Backblaze. Now again, of course, if you are downloading like everything, it may take a very long time depending on your download speeds, which at least for me are 10 times faster than my upload speed, which should then bring my you know two to three weeks of upload down to just a couple of days to download everything. Aside from that, for me at least, restored files and folders came down really quickly and used the full one gig download capacity that I pay my internet service provider for. So I don't have any concerns over this for my use, but depending on the amount of data you are backing up and how quickly you'll need access to that data in the event of you know having to restore everything, then this may or may not be an issue for you. In terms of pricing, Backblaze is a very affordable service in my eyes and pretty simple to calculate at five bucks per terabyte per month. And I'm currently storing around 13 terabytes of data in their B2 cloud service. And last month I paid $66.77 in data storage costs. Now the only kind of gotcha that I found with their pricing is that Backblaze charges on both data stored and data downloaded. Now my 13 terabytes of data equates to around about 780 bucks per year for storage. But if I download the entire 13 terabytes once a year, it would only cost an extra 135 bucks. And if shit has really hit the fan, then I know that I'll be more than happy to pay that 135 bucks to get back all of my data. And that's kind of what you're paying for with a cloud backup service. You're just paying for peace of mind. The second NAS backup service that I tested was Synology C2. One of my NAS drives is a Synology. I like Synology products. So it made sense for me to give it a try. But you can use Synology C2 service on other brands of NAS drives. It's not exclusively just for Synology devices. I have a QNAP here and I've been backing up from the QNAP to Synology services just as well. Sacrilege, I guess. Sacrilege. And it's been a pretty similar experience to Backblaze, though I would definitely say it feels like a slicker system that maybe looks nicer and perhaps more idiot proof. Now, again, my data backed up at reasonable speed. So another yeah two or three weeks to wait for my data to upload. Technically, this video is really taken about six months to plan because of just all the waiting. And similarly with restorations, like data restores quickly and easily via the NAS software at full speed. And I've had zero issues with the service since signing up. Now regarding pricing though, their 13 terabyte plan comes in at 102 bucks 44 cents per month, including taxes, which is considerably more than Backblaze, but just bear with me a moment. They don't charge you anything extra for restoring, but even when factoring in the additional Backblaze costs, it is still quite pricey. But in 
In addition to, you know, just backups, Synology also has data retention policies to automatically shed data when it gets beyond a certain age, which of course over time will stop your data from, you know, growing exponentially. Synology also has a data deduplication feature, again, which will minimize the backup size. And, and actually, if I take a look at my own backup service, I'm using less than 10 terabytes of storage and paying a little less around 90 bucks per month. So it does seem that those features do work quite well. Synology C2 also has some additional sharing features, which will let you share files and folders direct from the Synology C2 cloud, rather than having someone access your, you know, your NAS drive directly, which actually is a really great way to keep your NAS data safe and, you know, still share data without opening up external access to other people. So even though it's more expensive, I do find myself leaning towards Synology as the better overall service. But if we are, of course, comparing just like for like in terms of the direct backup service, they are very, very close to each other. One cloud storage service that I wouldn't recommend for your NAS backup though is iDrive. iDrive has cropped up in several of my other videos over the past year with its insanely cheap first year cloud storage offerings. You can get five terabytes of cloud storage for seven bucks 95 for a whole year. It is nuts. But if you want to back up a NAS drive, I can't recommend them. Now I'll be honest, I got as far as starting the upload and then I waited weeks, weeks, and a literal like two months and my data still hadn't finished backing up. So because there didn't seem to be like an end in sight for when this will actually finish, I've just chalked them down to a fail for me. But maybe that's just me. You know, your situation might be completely different. But pricing wise for NAS backup, they have a very, very strong first year only discount available, which gives you five terabytes of their cloud backup for just a one-off price again of 59.62. And after that kind of first year, it reverts to 79.50 per year. So that is still an extremely affordable service, but only if you aren't hampered by poor upload speeds like I was. And if I'm downloading and uploading and restoring files, I need to know that this backup service is gonna be fast enough for me. There are two more options though for backing up your NAS without using the cloud. Now the first option you have is of course to back up locally using a USB drive. Now this can be a great option if you find a USB drive with you know, more capacity than your NAS. It also means you can restore relatively quickly because you just plug in a USB drive and copy the data back over again and you're done. Now where this falls down for me though is that making sure that the USB drive is actually protected. Like things like keeping it in a, a fireproof safe to avoid a house fire taking both your NAS drive and its backup out at the same time. Making sure it's free from defects. That's one I would particularly worry about when it comes to restoring your data. You know, the USB hard drive itself could get corrupted or it might just suffer a mechanical fault, which then renders your backup useless. But with that said, you can normally find some fairly big USB backup drives at reasonable prices on Amazon. So this might be an option if you aren't too fussed about your data, but you know, want to have a second copy just in case. And I'll link a good couple of options down below that I've used over the last few years or so. Another option would be replicating the data from your NAS to a second NAS. Now this approach means you must buy two NAS units, one to hold your data and then one to back up to, so it kind of doubles the cost. And you should also be keeping that in a different location. So perhaps a friend's or parent's house, but you and they will then need, of course, both decent internet speeds to do so. And then this introduces other complications like securing the data transfer between locations. And so all in all, backing up to a second NAS is certainly an option, but for most consumers, it will get pretty tricky pretty quickly. So I would say that unless you know what you're doing here, you'd just be better off looking at one of the other options with my kind of personal preference being either Backblaze or Synology. Okay, so it's a couple of weeks later and I've had to reshoot the end of this video because after I finished shooting some of the extra footage for this video, I actually realized there was a consistent difference between Synology and Backblaze. So for me, Synology restores faster than Backblaze. But it is worth noting that my Synology data is stored here in Europe. Well, we're not in Europe anymore, but I'm from the UK. Now Backblaze stores my data in the US, so it has much greater distance to travel to get to me and therefore, you know, more potential issues and slowdowns can be introduced along the way, like outside of our control. So for me, if you are in the UK, then if if you care about speed to restore, then Synology, I feel, would be the better option. Now, if you don't mind slightly slower speed, but do prefer cheaper costs, then Backblaze is the better option. However, I suspect that if you live in the US, then Backblaze's restoration speeds are going to be much better, and so then you can have the best of both worlds, a more affordable solution, and a fast service. Now, there's going to be links down below to sign up for both, and personally, I'm actually going to go for Backblaze here, even though I saw slower restoration times, because for me, the chances of me needing to restore something is pretty slim hopefully, and it's not something that I'm going to be doing every single day. So if the day does come when, you know, my NAS blows up and I lose everything, well, I'm happy to wait to download all of my data again. Let me know in the comments which one you think you'd go for and why, and go watch this video to find out the best password manager or even the best cloud storage to use.